this is Chicho again. And what we're going to do in this reading session is uh, read through Omega Men number 37, published in April of 1986. And this comic is the first solo Lobo story. And uh, what's the title? It says uh, Vega. Bedlam versus Lobo in Partners to the Bitter End by Todd Klein and Keith Giffen. And Keith Giffen is uh, one of the co creators of uh, Lobo with uh, Roger uh, Slif uh, Slifer, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. And this is uh, basically the first solo Lobo story. And it's uh, the print run for this is uh, much lower than the first print run, um, first appearance of Lobo, which occurred in um, Omega Man number uh, number three. Okay, and uh, oh, this one uh, Lobo, uh, the first appearance occurred in uh, 1983, and the Lobo in this in the Omega Man series, uh, if you're a Lobo a Lobo fan looks a lot different well not a lot different but the color the uniform the outfit is different than uh, you know the sort of the biker uh, lobo that uh, everyone's grown to love and it's definitely different than uh, the reincarnation re revamp version of uh, the new lobo that was introduced last year in 2014 and uh, uh, lobo just makes uh, casual appearances here and it's it's this series this omega man series is actually magnificent it's a fantastic series there's a lot of cool characters a lot of aliens um a lot of uh a lot of unique situations uh, very funny okay uh, and the the way they introduced Lobo was fantastic. He was considered, and well, he is considered to be uh, the most ruthless bounty hunter in uh, in the universe. Um, and he's got some unique uh, unique abilities. He's the he's the last Zarnian. He ended up killing his whole whole planet. He killed everyone. Uh, well, everyone back then, anyway. And uh, I actually didn't get introduced to Lobo through Omega Man. I got introduced to Lobo uh, through basically started loving Lobo with uh, with these comics, uh, with Lobo, the last of Zarnian. And uh, if you've watched some of my comics previously, you'll know that I'm a Lobo fan, and this is uh, hands down one of the best storylines ever told uh, Lobo number one to four and um, it's a fantastic series uh, the artists are uh, Keith Giffen Alan Grant and Simon Bisley and Bisley um, is the artist and Giffen and Grant are uh, the storytellers and Bisley's Lobo is amazing Lobo and his artwork uh, Bisley's artwork is fantastic and if you want to have a funny read, uh, one of the best story arcs, uh, well, in DC Comics and comic book history, in my opinion, I've read through these four a number of times. Um, and I remember reading it the first time. It cracked me up. Uh, and the artwork, the covers for these are brilliant. Like, uh, in this third issue, I just couldn't stop laughing. He, they can't, you know, Lowell gets captured by... Uh, some grannies and uh, there's a spelling bee to the death and it is it is one of the funniest things i've ever read in comics and uh, this is issue number four and it's definitely well worth reading after i read the storyline um i fell in love with lobo i had i had read lobo before uh and i was curious to see what they were going to do with this i wasn't sure and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. And uh, Giffen, Grant, and Bisley followed up uh, Lobo with Lobo Paramilitary Christmas Special, which is again a fantastic read where uh, the Easter Bunny is jealous of Santa Claus uh, 
getting all the glory, um, being the number one, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, holiday. So he hires Lobo to kill Santa Claus. Uh, that is a really funny read. As for uh, my first, uh, you know, the first story of Lobo that I read, it would have to be, uh, I believe it was a two issue run. And this is the one I found. I couldn't find the other one in my, in my, in my stacks of boxes. I only went through a handful just to find the, the Lobos here. But uh, I'm not sure if this is, I think this is part two of where Lobo comes after Superman. And the story of this uh, two-parter, I'm not sure in which Superman title this was. Um, I'm not even sure if they were doing the triangle numbering system um, which they weren't because later on um, as we've read uh, with uh, death of superman there was a triangle numbering uh, system um, where you could tell which superman titles you were supposed to read per year but um, in this two-parter basically what happens is lobo is drinking in a bar at the other side of the galaxy and um, someone walks into the bar with a superman t-shirt and uh, lobo finds out that you know this person this alien loves superman because he thinks he's the toughest creature in, in the universe and lobo is getting drunk and they both get drunk and lobo decides to come and kill superman just because he wants to have the number one title so they hop on lobo's bike and fly to earth and lobo just destroys Superman I'd never seen that in a comic book where Superman gets annihilated and this was pre doomsday and uh, the only reason that Lobo didn't end up killing Superman was because the story goes uh, Lobo was drunk so his senses weren't as sharp as they should have been so he only ended up killing I can't remember if it was a, uh, a hologram version of Superman or whatever it was. Superman basically tricked Lobo into thinking that Lobo had killed Superman. And uh, Superman basically, you know, rides off in his, uh, in, on his bike into outer space with uh, the person who, you, who was wearing the Superman shirt, now wearing a Lobo shirt. And it's a fantastic read. Uh, if you want to have a read through this uh, um, this is I'm pretty sure it's part two since Lobo was already beating up Superman okay and uh, I'll share one more thing with you guys uh, as far as the most amazing uh, Lobo cover goes it would have to be demon number 12 okay sorry about this little thing there but I consider this to be the most amazing comic book cover ever it's uh there was a sort of a story arc where lobo you know is introduced to the demon comic line and this is after the last zarnian um i believe so anyway this is june 1991 and uh the cover is just by Bisley. he didn't do the artwork inside but i consider this to be magnificent i actually scanned this and I have a large print of this uh, laminated that uh, and one of my old places I used to have on the wall and I think it's absolutely magnificent beautiful work I think this is some of Bisley's best work at par with slain the horned god right okay so Omega Man number three is the first appearance of Lobo Omega Man number 37 is the first solo Lobo story okay and these are basically Omega Man number one uh, number two and then it kicks into number three and I do have multiple copies uh, of Omega Man number three I think this is an important very very important comic uh, and then Omega number four and Lobo makes an appearance in Omega Man, Omega Man number five. And then it goes all the way to uh, number nine, where 
I believe is a cameo appearance again. Okay. And then Lobo's first full appearance is in Omega Man number 10. Again, I got a couple of copies of this. And as far as investment goes, uh, I can't believe that these things are as cheap as they are personally. Um, they're, uh, well, is DC is one of DC's most important characters, Lobo. And as far as uh, investing in these things goes, well, I'd be inclined to buy more personally. So what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is uh, read through the first solo Lobo story, okay? This one is uh, more damaged than uh, than this one. This one looks like it's beautiful coffee. I mean, take a look at this. Amazing coffee. Right. So let's throw this one back. This one hasn't been read, that's for sure. And some of these uh, bags that I have, they have prices on them, but these aren't really the, the prices of the comics. Let's take a look. Serious old school bag. This one's got uh, spine stress and a little bit of mix here. As far as grade goes, this one uh, probably a seven and a half or so, or even a seven, right? Yeah, look at the scuff marks here. I give this one around a seven, well, seven and a half. So it's a good reading copy. take a look and this is Omega Man number 37 published monthly by DC Comics the number here 666 Fifth Avenue New York if you believe in conspiracies this would definitely hit the spot right uh, New York postmaster uh, annual subscription rate of $15 so how much was this cover price for this is dollar fifty US or two dollars Canadian okay DC comics and what's the date on this well we know it's 1986 that's what it is right April 1986 okay so this is the Omega men um, Nice colors, very 80s, definitely 80s comic book. Well, 70s, 80s. I love the vibrant colors uh, of the comics from that period.
these characters are super cool. I think in one of the issues, she gets her wings turn off, torn off or something. I forget this guy's name. And this guy has a temper. The cat looking one. playing the some kind of string instruments ah look at this pretty right very vibrant third time's a charm my fellow Megans the end and then there's the Omega male and we're into first solo logo story I haven't read this since well since a very very long time ago okay let's have a read partners the Las Vegas story. Dread all yellow contamination zone. Him, they hire Lobo. Wheeze. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Wheeze. Fine. Snarkus. Wheeze, wheeze. Buy back contract. This guy's scared. Lobo's after him. There's Lobo coming through, right? Oh, yeah. Lobo's definitely after him, right? seen him I don't play them games try Ralph's Lobo is not pleased smack shows him a picture again okay left bidibs ago <laughs> left bidibs ago back way And this Lobo is uh, much different. Well, different. Gatu Karna, the courthouse. Holding cell four. Jury's out. Won't be long now. Digits didn't believe me. Idiots didn't believe didn't believe me. Idiots, he's saying it like a cowboy. That's how you pronounce it, I guess. I have Signet, the something sign logo. But but ah uh, no, he'll be here first. This is uh, his sort of cowboy with Lobo. Uh, I don't know if they were partners or not, but. I know the story, they hook up, they go hunting. Oh, Lobo found the guy. I guess he's dead now. Beep. What does that say? 2801 credit, 2802 running. Running. So I guess that's uh, him getting his credit. Bounty Hunter. Ah, yes. Oh, 
hops in his ship, takes off. I guess that's the planet they're on right now. This is the criminal court. Lobo is landed. There he is coming up. <laughs> Keep walking, clown. Military personnel only. Oh, big mistake. Split. That's one guy dead. Done it myself so many times. Always wondered. Now all feel it. At least I know not the struggle. Oh, Lobo's coming after him, I guess. Maybe. Let's check it out. All the blood splatters everywhere. Blood running in case of fire. Crack. Hello, partner. Oh, choke. And he kills him. This guy. Before we read the last page, this cowboy is actually, uh, if I recall correctly, this is the guy that Lobo goes on the hunt with uh, in Omega Man number 10, um, where they, I think they board one of Omega Man's ships and uh, they make a bet to see who's going to kill more people as they try to capture one of the Omega Men. Okay. So in this issue, he tracks down his old partner and kills him. Interesting. I don't remember this at all. I remember the number 10 though. Beautiful red blood work, eh? Who did the dialogue letter? Oh, Keith Giffen did the plot pencils and inks. Cool. So. Let's take this, continue this. Hanasi Station. No numb, we never close. Yeah, that one. Sniff, don't stare. The four true, last of the Valeropians. Yes. What's the limit on the table? Three, Vin. You kidding? No limit for him, ever. Oh, I guess that's Lobo sitting there. I have stitched. I have stitched. I guess that's the one that signed Lobo. Beep. Two thousand and two credit. Two thousand and eight running. Very little words. Eh? Just beautiful panel work telling the story. Very cool. Todd Klein, dialogue and letters, plot pencils and inks. Keith Giffen, brilliant Keith Giffen. Cool. And that's the first solo Lobo story. Should we have a flip through uh, Omega Man number 10? Let's have a little flip through Omega Man number 10. I'm curious to see if that's the storyline where uh, he goes with the cowboy to, uh, to track down some of the people on the ship. Old school bags can be like this.
this reading cup here. So let's find Omega Man number 10. Let's see which one is that. reading copy and which one is in rougher shape. Wow, they're both in amazing shape. Doesn't make a difference. Let's crack this one open. Actually, let's crack this one open. So this is Omega Man number 10. We're just gonna check, uh, just to see if it's, uh, if it's this one where he goes in with the, with the cowboy. Hunting him down. Roger Slif Slifer, Slifer and Todd Smith, so uh, Roger Slifer is uh, the other co-creator with uh, Keith Giffen of Lobo. And this is January of uh, 1984. <laughs> oh, so. Gentlemen of the new Citadel Empire, I present to you my prisoners, the Omega Men. Lobo hunts him down. He always gets his man, woman, creature. So a lot of Lobo. Lobo, help him. Lobo. I think they cut a deal maybe with the Omega, Omega Man, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm gonna run up. And this is the character that cracked me up. Uh, he's a funny character, I like this character a lot. Lobo's in, uh, in a lot of the pages here, a lot of the panels. That's right, Rock Puss, I forgot. Your son was brutally murdered by the Citadel, wasn't he? As I remember, they blew his little head off. <laughs> Maybe even those behind the wall gave the order. Oh, I was trying to get the Rock Guy to really piss so he breaks down the wall. <laughs> no brute won't let them keep us out Boom, breaks through right <laughs> look at this guy's face <laughs> he did it this guy cracks me up look at his facial expressions oh yeah they're holding this guy that's right. Oh, look at Mr. T. Stop, Lobo. We surrender. Look at Lobo. He's on a rampage. I can't see him not killing him. So that's not the one with uh, with the cowboy, where him and the cowboy go hunting for the Omega Man. So it could be number nineteen or twenty, 
or it could be number uh, number nine the one previous to this I got a feeling it might be from uh, in number 19 to 20 but just in case let's take a look at number nine if uh, it's in this one if not I guess uh, at some point in the future I'll have to make another video and um, read you guys that one right because it is a nice one it's a nice little story and this comic is in really good shape at least the nine I don't think it's been read Let's have a little flip through this. Yeah, this one has definitely not been read. of logo where uh, the Omega Man guy comes to cut a deal with them that's cool should we read this last one yeah let's read this last page the realization eventually draws on Primus oh. the realization eventually dawns on Primus no word from Nimbus in two days. I've got to face it. We've been had. Our ranks, our ranks have dwindled even further, and we have no idea who our foes are or how to fight them. Only one man does. Ah, Primus, it took you long enough. Oh, Lobo. I assume you've come to request my services. We need someone as twisted as they are you've come to the right place right. you're ready to pay the price I am good because my fee is is a single human life if you overcome this threat my life is yours that's the kind of operation I like To be continued and this is the one that kicks it off into uh, Omega Man number 10 right so that was the first uh, with uh, Omega Man number 37 that was the first uh, solo Lobo story okay uniquely told Omega Man number 10 uh, first full Lobo story and it does appear in the whole story in that one first solo Lobo story print run for this I believe it was fairly low uh, back then when uh, uh, certain titles were ending towards the end the print runs were extremely low on some of the comics and this is the first appearance of Lobo Omega Man number three, a very, very important book for DC Comics. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.